Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Comerica Park has been home sweet home for the Tigers in 2010 winners of 11 of their last 12 here in Detroit the Tigers have the best home turf record in the American League Central Division tonight the nine game homestand continues on a beautiful night for baseball here in the Motor City fans are filing in for game two of this series featuring the Seattle Mariners and the Detroit Tigers and as we check the American League Central Division standings coming into play tonight. Right now, the Tigers trailing Minnesota by one game, and the Chicago White Sox are two games back in third place. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen, glad to have you with us for game two of the series. Tigers take the opener by a score of seven one last night, Rod. Good offensive night for the ball club. Tonight they take out a left-hander, Jason Vargas. And the Tigers, through the years, in fact, since 2006, have been really good against left-handed pitching. Well, they'll need to be that uh, way today because Vargas has been one of their better pitchers this year if you look at his numbers. But you go back to 2006, they had guys like Craig Monroe. They had Marcus Timms. Of course, Brandon Inns connected for a lot of home runs that particular season. But then you flip the script to 07. They added guys like Sheffield and, of course, Ordonez. And now you've got Cabrera. So they've been able to dominate some left-handers to the tune of a 2 76 batting average, 130 and 85 is their record. That's a 600 winning percentage, and they've also done really nice work this year against left-handed pitching, and they'll need to do as much today because they want to keep this Seattle Mariners team exactly right where they're at. All right, now speaking of dominating, Justin Verlander has done just that. However, and we do have a big however, the Tigers and under Justin Verlander have not been able to beat Seattle in his last four starts, so hopefully that'll change tonight. Well, really, since Don Wakamatsu has taken over as the manager of the last four starts, Verlander hasn't beaten this team, and what they do is they grind out at bats against Verlander. They foul off lots of pitches. You look at his numbers, on 4 he's got an earned run average that's very high. You see the guys at the bottom, they do some damage against Verlander, which is unusual. Most guys don't hit 400 or 378 against Verlander, but you're talking about Ichiro Suzuki hitting 378. But what Verlander must do today, he must mix in some pitches early. I'm talking about curveball, changeups, and sliders, and not so many fastballs too early in this game. All right, that's the story from here at Comerica Park. And now with more on our coverage, we'll go back to the Call Sam Studio. And here's Trevor Thompson.
Coming into Comerica Park here on a beautiful Saturday night for baseball. Seattle is in town as we continue along on our 4th of July weekend. And by the way, if the Tigers combine for three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get a free small order of curly fries. The Tigers starting lineup tonight, or I should say the Mariners starting lineup tonight, is presented by Honda Bluefield, and it features Ichiro leading it off. He is in right field, and Sean Biggins batting second. And he is at second base. His career numbers against Verlander not so good. Milton Bradley the DH. Jose Lopez at third. Franklin Gutierrez in center field. Casey Kochman opens up at first base tonight. And their bottom three is Bard, Saunders, and Jack Wilson. The scouting report on Justin Verlander is presented tonight by Scott's Lawn Pro. Well, Verlander needs to figure out a way to beat this team. He is 0-4 in his last four starts against this team. He needs to mix in some breaking balls and change-ups because they foul off a lot of his fastballs. And with a real good start here tonight, at least for me, I think Verlander solidifies a spot on this year's American League all-star roster. I can't think of 15 pitchers in the American League that are better than Verlander. And he also needs to do a better job with the running game. They have been successful on 10 of 13 attempted steals this year against JV. His move is much better than that. Let's take a look at the Tigers defensively. It's always presented by your Beaumont Hospital. You got Rayburn in left today. Jackson's in center. Boss is in right. Inge, Worth, Gian, Cabrera back in there after one night off with, uh, I guess, a step back. And Gerald Blair, G Money behind the dish as he is on most nights uh, these days against left handed pitching. Verlander gave up four runs in his last start against the Braves, but ended up getting a win in that game. 17th start, one complete game, 9 and 5, real good earned run average. Not as many strikeouts this year as last year, but that's a good thing. And Verlander pitching to a little bit more contact early in games, and that allows him to stay around a little bit longer. So we are ready for baseball tonight as Verlander. Starts his windup, and the first pitch of the ball game is a strike to Ichiro Suzuki. Ichiro to be followed by Sean Figgins, and then Milton Bradley on a gorgeous night here tonight. 84 degrees, our game time temperature in the Motor City. Verlander's 0-1. Slap foul back to the screen, 0-2 on Ichiro, who last night was one for four for the Seattle Mariners. Looks like Verlander is coming out today the same way that he did uh, his last start in Atlanta. Very hot, humid day that afternoon. But Verlander, majority of his pitches, first few innings were. Lots of fastballs, 95 miles an hour and above. Ichiro comes in batting 378 career against Verlander. He has had some success against him. And Verlander missing outside with the off speed pitch, one and two. And here's Verlander's uh, numbers from that start against the Braves. Didn't really have his great stuff that day. Only walked two, but. He kind of fought himself all afternoon long. Same pitch, same spot, same result, two and two. Ichiro checks into this one, batting 331. 36 multiple hit games this year. That's tops in the American League. And he waves and misses. Verlander at 97, up in the zone, strikes him out. Ichiro reaching that time. Don't think for one moment that Verlander does not know that this uh, Seattle Mariners team has beaten him the last four times he's gone up against them. And he's going to own it today. And I think Verlander's going to have a good day against this team here, especially at Comerica Park. He pitches well in this ballpark. Here's Sean Figgins. Figgins has been up and down in their lineup, in fact. A while back, Don Wakamatsu sent him down to the nine spot of the lineup. That didn't go over too well with Sean. He's back in the two hole these days and batting 232. Had a couple of hits in the ball game last night, two out of four. If you look up Figgins' numbers, uh, yes, he had a career season last year, which was his free agent year, and he parlayed that into a really nice deal in Seattle. Yeah, but other than that, uh, he's pretty much been right around 260, 270. He steals bases. And he walks, but uh, I think the year he had last year, uh, he's not going to have many years like that. It was a year in which he scored over 100 runs. He walked a ton, stole a ton of bases. He's one of the best table setters in the major leagues, at least when he's going good. 318 at this time last year. 
Three balls and one strike on Figgins, who is known for making the opposing pitcher work. He will draw his walks. He has 44 so far this year. Three one pitch. Three and two now on Sean Figgins. Eight years in an Angels uniform, and that's where he really made his name. He was at the top of some pretty good offenses for Mike Sosha and uh, with some teams that won the West seemingly year after year. But Figgins only three for 21 against Verlander. And again, the 3 2. It is line foul. Rayburn in left. And Jackson in center are playing Figgins awfully shallow. If Figgins gets a fastball from Verlander, he could hit it over their heads. I understand they're trying to take the single away, but uh, guys that throw hard as Verlander does, sometimes when you make contact, the ball travels quite a ways. This Seattle Mariners team against Verlander, his first start against them this year, they fouled off 38 pitches. 38 pitches they fouled off against Verlander. And a good many of those were after two strikes. And so whatever he does here today, he needs to figure out a way to miss uh, some of these bats. I think it's already has given him a battle here. Again, the three two swing and a miss. And finally Verlander strikes him out on a 96 mile an hour fastball so he has fans Suzuki and now Figgins third consecutive day that the Seattle Mariners team has run into a pitcher that has a good good fastball and also good secondary pitches a couple of days ago before they departed New York in the CC Sabathia Scherzer was tremendous in last night's game and now they got to look at Verlander today although they come in with confidence against Verlander because they've beaten him twice this year Here's Milton Bradley. He's DHing in the ball game tonight for Seattle. He homered against Verlander the last time these two teams met in Seattle. Verlander's issues this year, as a whole, if you look at the numbers, they pretty much have come first time through the batting order. The batting average over 300 against Verlander, but after that second inning, in the low 200s against JV. Two balls, one strike on Bradley. So if he can get through this lineup first time through, yeah, then you know that he is going to, uh, he's going to have a good day. Bradley was 0 for 3 in last night's game. Here's the 2 1. Verlander in his career here at Comerica Park has been really, really good. In fact, 39 and 19 lifetime at home and an ERA in the mid threes. This is his 74th start career here at Comerica. 2 2 misses high, three balls, two strikes. Of course, the Tigers and the Mariners wearing their patriotic hats over this 4th of July weekend. And you've seen them all around baseball. The Tigers have the white caps with the red, white, and blue in the old English D. 3 2 pitch is fouled off. And to each and every one of you out there, have a hate, happy, and safe a holiday weekend. Please be safe, but also have lots of fun and eat lots of food. Old glory ruffling in the slight breeze here tonight at the ballpark. Again, the 3 2 swing and a miss, and Verlander with a heck of a start. He is fanned the side here in the first inning against Seattle. We'll go to the bottom of the first. No score.
back in the lineup at first base. Then Bosch, then Guillen, Inge, Laird, and Worth are uh, your bottom three in the lineup. So here comes Austin Jackson, the center fielder who picked up a hit in the ball game last night, extending his hitting streak to six straight games, and he'll try and get it started here against the lefty Jason Vargas. The first pitch is outside, one and zero. Vargas goes six feet, two fifteen, out of Apple Valley, California. One ball, one strike on Jackson. That kind of gives you an idea of how Vargas is going to pitch here today. And he misses with the first pitch fastball and comes right back with a breaking ball for a strike. He's not overpowering by any stretch of the imagination. 86 to 90 with his fastball. He's got a curve. He's got a change. And tremendous mound presence. So this guy's not afraid. Here's the one two. Missed it high with the fastball. Two balls and two strikes. Just underway in a warm evening here at Comerica, 84 degrees on a beautiful night. Rolled toward Wilson, who makes the routine play, and one gone. The Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting report on Jason Vargas. Get the Bernstein advantage. We go to bat for you. Milestone start for Vargas, his 50th of his career, and he's been quality just about every time he's gone out there this year for the Seattle Mariners. 12 quality starts, which is tied for fourth. In the American League, but July in his career has not been a very good month for him. He's one in four with an 8.31 earned run average. So that's our Bernstein advantage. Here's Ryan Rayburn with one out. We got to give Mr. Bernstein an advantage. And typically every night there's one that we do find against the opposing pitcher. Off to his left, Wilson. Rayburn is out. A couple of ground balls for Vargas. Two gone. We brought it up last night. If your name's not Lee or Hernandez, you're going to kind of pitch under the radar uh, in Seattle. But take a look at these numbers 2.80 earned run average, 96 in a third innings pitched, only 24 walks. Uh, this guy throws lots of strikes. Therefore, the Tigers' game plan is to swing early and to swing often, hoping you get that fastball in the first pitch. Only four walks in his last five starts, which has covered better than 31 innings. You can win that way. Ordonez takes high, one ball, one strike. That is rolled slowly, third base line, one and two. Back on May 26th, Ordonez had a little bit of success against Vargas. He got one of those fastballs. Let's see. Sure did. There he goes. Maglio this year has hit 10. One more than he did all of last year. There's the one two. Two balls, two strikes on Ordonez. 336 over his last 39 games. And Vargas missed again, running the count to three and two. That's something Vargas will do that a lot of left-handers are reluctant to do against good right-handed hitters, and that's throw fastballs inside. And Maglio, a career 312 hitter that really doesn't strike out all that often. I think it's an advantage for guys like Vargas and Fisker to be pitching on a staff that does have the big horses, Lee and Hernandez, keep some pressure off them. Yes, I, I do. That's a great point, and I agree with you 100%. Drill to right field straight at each of them. And that is going to end the inning. So, a one, two, three frame for both starters. On our way to the second, no score.
1849. And by Comcast, call 1-800-COMCAST for TV, phone, and internet. Verlander came out uh, today with both guns ablaze, and he punched out Ichiro in the very first inning. He also got Figgins, and for good measure, he got Bradley. However, in the process, he threw 20 pitches to get through that first inning. And we'll see what transpires here in the second. Lopez Gutierrez and Kochman facing the hard-throwing right. That's into center field. Jackson is back. One pitch, one out. So, after 20 in the first, one pitch to get one out here in the second. That's good. And here comes Franklin Gutierrez. Franklin last night homered against Max Scherzer. Really the only thing that they could get going last night against Max, who was absolutely wonderful last evening. That start last night may have been more impressive for me than the 14 strikeout performance. Agreed. Absolutely. Because he was pitching last night. In that 14 strikeout performance, he was blowing people away with an explosive fastball. But in last night's game, he had a nice slide piece. He had a changeup. And the fastball was moving all over the place with the exception of the one that he threw to Gutierrez. That Gutierrez hit into that Tigers bullpen. And uh, as you pointed out in the uh, postgame show last night, he seemed to be more economical, I think, in that start. Stayed around longer, eight innings. Yeah, in fact, that's his longest start ever of his career. Here's the 1-1. One, 1-2 one. One and two on Franklin Gutierrez. Pretty good numbers against Verlander, 9 for 29, and two of those hits have been home runs. He's got a quick bat. He's got a really quick bat. Good fastball hitter. Therefore, the pitch... Uh, to get him out with maybe that real good breaking ball that Verlander possesses. Here comes the one two. That's in the air. Should be playable. Cabrera in foul ground. Two gone. By the way, this game tonight is available in crystal clear high definition on Fox Sports Detroit HD, sponsored by Comcast. And what a night it is. Another big crowd here this evening. It's a final score. Tampa on the strength of a late grand slam by Matt Joyce beats Minnesota. And Tigers. Matt Joyce. Tigers have a chance now to draw even in the central. And Joyce ought to be a name that you recognize. Former Tiger. The 0 1. Casey Kochman, the batter, with two outs. Catchman batting just a buck 87. He has driven in 22. He is kind of the odd man out now with uh, the reacquiring of Russell Brandon from the Cleveland Indians. Brandon played first base last night, but Kochman, his playing time will decrease now. And with that 187 batting average. The 0-2. Just off the plate. Verlander thought he had strike three. One and two on Kochman, who, despite the fact is not hitting all that well this year, remains a terrific defensive first baseman. And that one clearly outside. The one two is on the ground and under the glove of Danny Worth. Two out base hit for Casey Kochman. And that'll bring up the catcher, Josh Bard. First hit tonight for Seattle. The well traveled Josh Bard wearing Seattle colors these days. Batting 250. Bard last year was catching in Washington with the Nationals. He slaps the first pitch in the air toward left. Ryan Rayburn is cruising over. And just like that, the inning is over. So they get a hit. They strand a man. And you're watching Tigers baseball at Fox Sports Detroit. Presented by Bell Tower.
First pitch is inside 1 0 on Cabrera. Back in the lineup after some back soreness yesterday kept him out of the starting lineup late scratch. Ball two. Vargas had a 1 2 3 first inning, couple of ground balls and a fly ball. Sky to the right side. It is sailing toward the seats, and Ichiro can't get there. Two balls, one strike. Cabrera's slugging percentage of 6.28 is tops in the American League, and he'll be headed to the All-Star Game this year. That is for certain. To be played in Anaheim, California. Vargas missing inside, three and one. Even a miss, three and two. Cabrera has played in four All Star games, including the one here in Detroit back in 2005. He's never started in an All Star game. He said he'd love to start one. Driven left center field, hit well. And it's a diving attempt by Gutierrez. He can't come up with it. And Cabrera to second base with a double. And more than likely, he will not start in the All Star game this year because the honor is going to go to Justin Morneau of the Minnesota Twins. But Tabby has done a lot of damage this year. It's a great effort by Gutierrez in center field, a real good defender. He dives and stretches out. He can't catch it, but he keeps the ball right at his side, which keeps Cabrera at second. Good to see the big fella back. Didn't take long. And he's on base in his first at bat. By the way, that's a 12 game hitting streak now for Cabrera. Here is Brennan Bosch. Batting 340, had three more hits in last night's ball game and an RBI. And he skies the first pitch in a shallow left center field. Who's going to get it? Tough play for Wilson. And he makes it right in front of the left fielder, Saunders. It's a tough sky in left field. I don't think the left fielder Saunders saw the ball initially, so it's a shortstop. Uh, you just go as long as you can, as hard as you can, until he calls you off. And if he doesn't call you off, then obviously you make the play, which is exactly what Jack Wilson did. That's what Saunders is looking at. Gutierrez, the outfielders. Two of the three outfield spots covered in the sun. The right fielder Ichiro is in the shade, and those that are seated in the stands need some help right now. They need some eye black. There's Carlos Guillen. Ball one to Guillen. Carlos 0 for 4 in last night's game batting 279. Unproductive at bat there by Bosch. Runner on second. Nobody out. You've got to at least get him over to third base or drive him in. But we can't beat him up too bad. He's been so good this year. <laughs> it's kind of hard, isn't it? The facts are facts. Into right center field. Hit pretty good. But Gutierrez over there to make the play. Cabrera tags. And he'll come to third base. Don't know how they would have pitched Guillen had Cabrera been standing on third base. But obviously if Guillen does that, and then it's a sacrifice fly. And the Tigers are on the board first. Well, they can still get there. Vinge can come up with a base hit here. Brandon batting 256. Brandon was out taking some extra batting practice once again today, as he was yesterday. A couple of hits in that ball game, as you mentioned. One infield single variety, the other one a solid single. We're talking about some of the damage that uh, some Tigers hitters have done against left handed pitching and since the year 2006, and Brandon right in the middle of that. The 0 1. Floyd McClendon started retooling his swing last year, and boy, the first half of the season was just lights out. He was an all star, and of course, Brandon had the two bad knees. And Lloyd was saying earlier this year that, yeah, the knees are feeling better, but he just continues to work with the plan that they've devised for him last season. And you wonder what kind of year he would have had had he been healthy all year last year, because he was really rocking up until the all star break. There's a bouncing ball left side, scooped up by Lopez. And that is that. Tigers get a leadoff double, but fail to score Cabrera. Two innings in the books.
asking, preferably my wife, my mom, my aunts, my uncles, and my cousins, and everybody else. I love you guys, and this is my greeting to you on this 4th of July. Happy holidays. God bless and be safe. Well, Sergeant Hunter, happy holidays to you, and please be safe. We thank you for your service to our country on this 4th of July weekend. And uh, how about that, Rod? He was stationed in Hawaii, and uh, now he's in Iraq. So yeah. <laughs> quite a bit of difference there. Yeah, huge difference. We appreciate what all of our military they do for us. Well, we are headed to the top of the third here at Comerica Park. And it'll be Michael Saunders, Jack Wilson, and Ichiro Suzuki. No score. Verlander gave up a two-out single in the second, but no damage. Saunders batting in the eighth slot in this one tonight. He shows bunt. He's got some tools. This kid can run. He's got some power. Good throwing arm. Good defender. Hitting just 205. Still learning how to play the game of baseball. He grew up in Canada and didn't play a whole lot of baseball growing up. Played lots of other sports. Popped up. Let's see if Laird has room coming back to the screen back out of play. One ball and one strike. One of the other sports that Saunders played quite a bit of when he was a kid was lacrosse, which is very big in Canada, of course, along with hockey. But uh, Michael tells the story about when he was 10, his baseball team was really bad. His lacrosse team was really good. And he thought about giving up baseball to concentrate on lacrosse. And then uh, at the end of the season, he kind of missed it. So he went back to baseball. Good for him. He made a wise choice. The 1 1. I guess the kicker was his dad would not let him quit in the middle of the season in baseball. And so uh, he stayed with it. But he was one of those kids that uh, we talk often about. Played a lot of different sports. Soccer as well. It's fouled away 2 and 2. Don Wakamatsu was talking about Saunders recently saying, you know, he's going to get some starts now against left handed pitching. In fact, he started the other day against CC Sabathia in New York. And Don just said, we got to find out if he can hit lefties. You know, sooner or later, he's going to have to at this level. Bosch has proven very quickly that he can. 2 2 on Saunders. I think Don Wakamatsu also just trying to find the right mix. Trying to, trying to find the right eight, nine guys that he can write into his lineup on a daily basis and give them a chance to win. And he got him. Strike three. Verlander carved him up for his fourth strikeout. Time for a game break now as we go back to the studio. And here's Trevor Thompson. All right, Trev, thank you. That is good news. The Tigers again can pull into a first place tie with the win tonight. As Jack Wilson stands in. Have you seen uh, David Price's numbers, the talented left hander in the starting rotation for the Tampa Bay Rays? I have. He might start the All Star game. You know what? And I couldn't disagree with that. I mean, his numbers, he leads the league in ERA. He's got 11 wins, too. And wins, right. So, yeah, you'd be hard pressed. To not at least give him a very long look. Boy, do they have some prospects in that system? They got good pitching. Man, they got good pitching. 0 and 2 on Jack Wilson. A little bit outside. The All Star rosters will be announced tomorrow beginning at noon. You can tune in to Tigers Live at 12 30. Is this guy on it? Verlander? Yeah. I think so. I think he is. That's popped up. Third base side. Does Inge have room? Laird coming over as well. And neither can get to. Yeah, JB has a good start tonight. That'll be what? 10 wins. Price has 11. Buckholz has 10. Hughes has 10. Sabathia has 10. All those guys should be in. Lester has 9 wins. And a 2.86 ERA. And he's pitching tonight. So he's had a good year. And Justin's ERA is a little higher than uh, we normally expect it to be. It came in at 402. Swing and a miss, man. Wilson 
is out of there and five strikeouts already for Verland. Now he brought that nasty stuff with him today. His first three strikeouts came on fastballs, but the last two on this wicked, I mean wicked curveball. And if he finds this pitch along with the changeup and the slider, it's going to be a long night for Seattle Mariners hitting. I think an all star berth is in the back of his mind tonight. Well, I think he's in already, to be yeah. honest with you. I really do. There's not 15 guys in the American League better than him. Swing and a miss by Ichiro. There's just not. But obviously, I'm a little biased. I'd like to see all the guys go to the All Star game. Yeah, I don't think there's any question there aren't 15 that are better than him. It's a matter of are there 15 with better numbers that and maybe pitching on teams where they are their best player and have to be chosen. That's a good point. So you never know how that those numbers work out. But yeah, yeah. there's always going to be somebody that's deserving three or four guys that should be there that just aren't going to get there. One and two on Ichiro. I would not be shocked to find Brendan Bosch's name on that last uh, ballot of five where the fans kind of vote you in that fan the vote. Fan vote, yeah. I would not be surprised to see his name there. That would be awesome. It would be good for baseball to see a guy like Brendan Bosch in the All-Star game. How about Ichiro striking out for the second time in this game and six for Verlander. He is on a roll tonight. Laird catching tonight for the Tigers. Avila caught last night, and Gerald five for his last 12 as his average starts to perk up a little bit, but still under 200. Vargas can be tough on left handed hitters, but does not present much of a problem for right handers. Uh, he throws from the first base side of the rubber, and he also throws across his body, and, which is a tough look for lefties, but righties, and they get good looks at him. Two and one on Laird. Vargas had a 1 2 3 first, gave up a double to start things off in the second, but the Tigers failed to score that double. 158 left handers hit against Vargas. 2 and 2 on Laird. Vargas played at several different schools before becoming a professional. Cypress Junior College. He also played at Long Beach State, which is a terrific program, as is LSU. Three stops. In fact, he pitched with Jared Weaver at Long Beach State. Cypress, pretty good junior college, too. Yeah. He also was a DH at Long Beach and pitched. Pretty good hitter. 2 2, the count stays on Laird. 
The one thing they say about Vargas is that he's very even keeled, even tempered. In fact, as Jared Weaver once said, he's always been a kind of a laid back guy that doesn't let things affect him. He was that way in college. He pitches that way in the professional ranks as well. Just missed that one. 3 2 on Laird. Worth will follow, and then Jackson here in the Tigers' third. Driven in the air to left. Saunders going back to the warning track to make the catch. Hey fans, hit pitches thrown by former Tiger Dave Rosamond to the Comerica Park Lights on Friday, July 30th from 8 to 11 p.m. Enjoy three hours of Major League fun for only $249. For information, call 313-471-2550 or visit Tigers.com to hit off Dave Rosamond. Fantasy batting practice. That sounds like a whole lot of fun at bat. In fact, I bet I could step into the cage right now without any practice at all and I could turn it eight, two or three discs. No, you can, no can get a couple of knocks off. You can get a couple knocks off, Rosie. Under the lights. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Maybe I could. I don't know. I could, I could probably put it in play, maybe. Danny Worth the batter. One ball, one strike. Again driven toward left field and Saunders really having trouble with that sun out there. Two gone. You need glasses. You need the hat. And you also need the glove to shade the sun which allows you to make the play. Boy oh boy. Not fun when you have to play outfield under these conditions. It's probably going to be that way in left and center field for a little bit more. Still some sunlight out there in both of those fields. As Jackson steps in. Foul back out of play 0 2. Austin bounced out his first time up 0 for 1. This is shaping up to be quite a pitching matchup here between Verlander and Vargas. The 0 2 pitch. Jackson came into this game batting 307. He's done a terrific job of just kind of blending into the clubhouse this year. Well, apparently, uh, one of the uh, bat boys was injured, and they're helping him off the field. He is all right. Meanwhile, Jackson waiting on home plate umpire Kerwin Danley. There's the home plate umpire Kerwin Danley, and now he's going to get Jackson back into the batter's box. I play a lot of golf with uh, Kerwin Danley in the offseason. Question is, who's a better golfer? We're about even. Are you? Yeah, we're about even. You know, his short game's a little bit better than my short game, but uh, I can hit it further. But it's not always straight. But we have lots of fun. See, that terminology is all foreign to me. I don't golf. I don't <laughs> One two pitch is fouled away. One and two, the count stays on Austin Jackson. Jackson trying to extend his hitting streak to seven straight. Vargas looking for a one, two, three frame. And Jackson continues to give the battle. Well, if you're the Tigers, you know you're going to get lots of strikes from Vargas. And it's just picking the area that he's going to give you the strike in. For the most part, he has kept the ball out of the middle of the plate. And he has pretty much worked the corners. He has gone inside with good firm fastballs as he did right there again. But every time he goes inside, he's pretty much missed with the fastball so I'm wondering if he's doing it by design just to set up this next pitch down and away swing and a miss one two three inning as Vargas gets his first strikeout
uh, that you uh, respect the umpire or you know it's going to be tough to get good close calls on the night. Well here is Sean Figgins starting it off in the fourth inning in a scoreless game. Vargas and Verlander have both been really good tonight both allowing just one hit. Figgins a strikeout victim in the first that first inning Verlander struck out the side. Here's the 1 0. Showing bunt it is outside two balls no strikes on Sean Figgins. It's hard to bunt a hard thrower uh, like Verlander especially on a fastball. Uh, because obviously you're going to bunt that ball harder than you want to because of the velocity of the pitch. But Figgins is a good bunter and gets lots of infield singles as well. And when Figgins gets on he will steal some bases 23 this year which gives him seven consecutive years of 20 or more stolen bases. The 2 1. Figgins now 3 for 22. Lifetime against Verlander, but he's having the count here. Three balls, one strike. That's in the air toward left, picking up a little bit of steam, but it's run down by Rayburn. One gone. Time for the AT&T trivia question. Let's see what we have tonight. What former Tiger was the Mariners' opening day center fielder when the franchise debuted in 1977? It was a former Tiger that played center field on that day. We'll give the answer in a little bit. Milton Bradley stepping in. You know, you were talking about something earlier, Rod, how they were playing shallow on Figgins in that how sometimes when you're facing a hard thrower, you might get burned, and the Tigers almost got burned there. Yeah, Rayburn had to get on his horse to make that play. Bradley takes outside. 2 0. Bradley's been one of their better hitters the last week or so. His average perked up after they acquired Russell Brandon. Not a lot of pressure now for some of these guys to hit for power because Brandon. Has true home run potential. Don Wakamatsu, I was in his office today and he was talking about how the whole Ken Griffey Jr. situation was just left a real, real bad taste in his mouth. Of course, Ken Griffey Jr. retired about a month ago or so, wasn't it? Bad taste for Don or for Don, for Don for Don? Just the whole way that it went down. I mean, a superstar in that city and what he meant to that city and and Don just talked about how tough that was for him not writing his name in the lineup on a consistent basis and very very difficult to manage superstars when they're on the decline and that's exactly what uh, Wakamatsu was talking about how difficult that situation was for him. Well I would imagine that's probably the toughest thing for them to do because obviously you want to put them in the lineup on a daily basis but the bottom line is winning games and, and there's no question that Griffey's skills had deteriorated. But you're right. I mean, what have you done for that organization? Really, for all of baseball, it's just a hard way to uh, to part company, I suppose. And then for him to walk away that way. Yeah. Really, a no-win situation for Don. Welcome out to. Well, Verlander now has walked his first batter. That's Bradley. Here comes Jose Lopez. Bradley is not a true base stealer, but on occasion he will run. And what opposing teams have been doing against Verlander, he's got a lightning quick move. Uh, there's no debate about that. One of the best right handed moves in the game. But once he decides to go home and they see him pick his left leg up, they know it's going to be about 1 6, 1 7 before that ball gets in the layer to glove. And even if you're not a true base stealer, you can steal a base. It's there. A good time to home plate would be what? About 1 1, 1 2. It's almost impossible to run on those guys that uh, get the ball to the catcher in that timely manner. And Gerald Lair, and it's no small sample. Since the beginning of the 2006 season, he's thrown out better than 36 percent, which ranks second all catchers. Second all catchers in the American League. Swing and a miss, Lopez. Down to the count on two. Laird this year has caught 11 trying to steal, which is the third highest total of runners caught in the American League. When you give him time to throw, and he's usually accurate, and it's usually right on the bag, and it's usually a caught stealing. 0 
two breaking ball slapped in the air toward left. Rayburn coming in, diving, can't get it. Bradley will get the second and stop there. It's a tough outfield to play, especially on the line. And that ball was hit on the line directly in the sun, and Rayburn broke back initially. And by him breaking back, he was not able to make the play. Almost got there. So this is the first good scoring threat for Seattle tonight. Two on and one out. And they have their number five hitter Franklin Gutierrez. I think they only had one runner in scoring position all last night. Maybe two. But it wasn't many. Scherzer was stingy. Seattle got the home run from Gutierrez early. And that's all he would get. Franklin cuts and misses 0-1. I think that was a slider at 87 miles an hour and a dandy Verlander doesn't throw many sliders, but when he does decide to throw one It's usually in that velocity range 87 to 89 miles an hour Back-to-back -back slide pieces Let's take a look at the slider courtesy of Lincoln Mercury. It's an Exmo See the nice tight spin. Sliders look like a fastball until about the last five feet, and they just continue to kind of inch their way out of the strike zone to the right-handed hitter. Oh. Try to hold up. Looked like he went. No, he held up. Slider at 91. Come on, JB, quit it. CB Buckner said that he did not go, and let's see if he went. Look like he went. One and two. Last night, Seattle did not get a man in scoring position until the ninth inning. Franklin's had a good time against Tigers pitching this year. 478 average. Seven RBIs. The one two inside as he bends him out of there. Two two on Gutierrez. One out walk to Bradley, a looping single to Lopez has put two men on here for Seattle. The end of the bat. Verlander will pick it up, tag the runner. Both runners advance, and Gutierrez is out. Two away. Apparently, the pitch of choice to uh, Gutierrez is the slider. And that last one at 90, and Verlander, of course, as you know by now, a real good athlete. And gets off the mound in a timely manner to get the out. He's got some work to do here, though. Casey Kochman now with two outs, two men in scoring position. Kochman had a single the other way back in the second. Verlander from the windup drops in a breaking ball. His secondary pitches today have been incredible. The curveball, the slider, not many changeups to this point. And of course, he's got 96, 97 in his back pocket as far as the fastball is concerned, but. The secondary pitches have been real good today, and it's a must for Verlander if he's going to beat this team today. Ooh, that one right by him in 97. Bradley down at third, and Lopez at second base. Oh, and two on Casey Kochman. Swing and a miss. He tried to hold up. Strike three called. He went around. Verlander, seven strikeouts.
the All-Star game that year, so he rebounded nicely from 0-4, 0-4-4 start. On that 84 uh, World Championship team, when I was sent down to the minor leagues to Evansville, it was Rupert Jones that came the other way. So, is that right? Yep, yep. Rupert Jones uh, replaced me on that big league roster that year. Balls hit well to right field. Ichiro going to the wall is back against the wall to make the catch. And I must say, Rupert Jones had a tremendous second half for the Tigers that year. That he did. What was Evansville like? Oh, my goodness. Not good. Well, for me, it was very, very, very disappointing, as you could imagine, leaving a team that started 35 and 5 and then having to go down to Evansville. I think I was uh, depressed. Yeah. I really was. I, I mean, for a little while, I was depressed. And had a bad year, too. I, I didn't recover. Well, you were on a team that started 35 and 5. You were there for Jack's no hitter. And I, I was hitting 296. Yeah. That has popped up and back out of play. It was tough to swallow. 0-2 on Maglio. Ordonez lying to right field his first time up. Vargas has retired seven straight. Donia is now one for five in this series. Missed it low. Here's the one two. Vargas is just pitching, not doing it uh, with the same kind of power and force and finesse as Verlander is, but the results are still the same. Economical with his pitches, throwing lots of strikes, moving the ball around, not really throwing anything right down the heart of the plate. That's a straight retired. Hey fans, baseball's biggest stars go head to head for one spectacular night in this summer's biggest event. Tune in when Fox brings you every thrilling moment of the 2010 MLB All-Star Game from Anaheim Tuesday, July 13th at 8 p.m. on your local Fox station. Here's Cabrera. He had a double back in the second. That led off the inning and the Tigers failed to score him. Mariners have two hits in this game. Tigers have one. Real nice uh, article that Bob Nightingale did uh, on Friday regarding Cabrera and uh, where he has come from. Talking about last year, that uh, final weekend of the regular season to where he is now. And he's just in a much, much better frame of mind. And uh, he said as much. Outstanding article. If you haven't read it, you probably can go online and get it. Yeah, I read that piece as well, and it was really well done. And, and not only that, but uh, I think Cabrera did a really good job of opening up. And letting him know what the last year has been like for him, but there are those in the clubhouse that have been around him a, a few years now to say that he is really a uh, new guy this year. Everyone makes mistakes, but it takes a big, big man to admit those faults and to do something about them. Proud of him. 3 1 pitch. And it'll get back in the seats. 3 and 2. We'll count on Cabrera. Well, what a year to spend for him offensively. And really from the get-go, this guy has just been an absolute force in the American League. And he could get to the All-Star break with 70 RBIs this year. Well, since he put on a Tigers uniform, he has been the most dominant uh, hitter in the American League from a power standpoint and RBIs. No one has done as much damage as Cabrera. Tom Brookins hanging out down there in right field. Uh, is he scared of Cabrera? Whistling one down in his direction? I would be. And he's not even a left-handed batter. Usually he'd play that way for a guy like uh, Big Brennan Box. I don't blame him, though. This boy hits the ball hard. <laughs> I don't either. He hits the ball hard, and he gets on you in a hurry. Chino's out in the bullpen. He'd go further if he could. <laughs> 
Here's the 3 2. And he walked him. So Cabrera on for the second time. First walk for Vargas. Well, we told you that Vargas holds the left handed batters to a 158 batting average, but this is a different bird right here. Uh, I'm talking about Bosch and the damage that he has done this year against some of the best left handed pitchers in all of baseball. CC Sebastian, he picked on him. He's got John Lester of the Boston Red Sox. He's one of the best lefties in the league. Matt Thornton, power left hander, Chicago White Sox, he busted him too. So it doesn't really matter who's on the mound when Brendan Bonds comes to the dish. If you're left handed, he's got a pretty good chance of getting a real good swing at you. Well, Brendan flight out his first time up 0 for 1. And another big rip, one ball and one strike. Take a look at this graphic here. But when you start talking about Matt Thornton, John Lester, CC Sebastian, that's what left handers do against those guys. We see Brandon Bosch's numbers at way up here at 440, but how about the bottom here? Major League average 239 against left handers. Bosch is hitting 440 against lefties, and it just went up a tick. Base in the right field, and Cabrera will go to second and stop there. Bosch has his first hit tonight, and now a six game hitting streak. Worth looking at again, I want you to understand the bottom note. The major league average against left handed pitching this year for left handers is 239. Brent Bosch now is over 440 with his average, and his slugging percentage was off the charts. Amazing start this young man has gotten off to. And he's just picked up the Tigers' second hit of the game, giving Guillen a chance to break the scoreless tie. Pitch in there for a strike. So Bosch is not just a little over the league average. He is way over the league average. 200 points. Amazing. And those left handers that we put up there, all of them got a real good shot of going to the All Star game this year. That is true. No balls, two strikes. It's kind of like how you talk about Cabrera when he will hit the opposing team's best and he will hit the best closers in the game. I mean, Bosch is hitting the best lefties in the game. I was talking to uh, Ty Van Berkeley, or their bench coach, uh, in their clubhouse before the game. And I'm not going to finish this story. Maybe you will. Let's see. Guillen is safe. He can finish the story. Infield hit. Good hustle play here by Guillen. It looked like he was a little off balance as he was swinging the bats, which meant he had one step out of the batter's box and. Figgins cuts in front of Wilson and can't get enough on his throw, but look at Gian getting out of the batter's box. But just to finish that story on uh, Ty Van Berkeley, and I was also talking to Rick Adair, the pitching coach, and I said, why'd you guys bring in Olsen, the left-hander, last night against Bosch with all these numbers? He said, well, we know what his numbers are, but, I mean, that's Olsen's role for us, and he needed some work, so we brought him in to face Brennan Bosch, but they were well aware of the fact that he's hitting 440 against left -handers. Well, now Brandon Inge, who has five career grand slams. Stepping up there with the bases full and two outs. Trying to get Verlander some runs to work with here. Here's the 0-1. 0-2 on Brandon. Quick chat on the mound now from the catcher Bard and Vargas. Angel for one with the ground out. Verlander, meanwhile, hoping his teammates can get him some offense. The 0 2. One ball and two strikes. The Angels closing in on a milestone. He is nine double shy of 200 for his career. One would look really good right here. The one, two. Two balls, two strikes. This all started with two outs when Cabrera walked. Bosch then singled. And Guillen has an infield hit. Two, two. Vargas had to dig out of a 
leadoff double jam back in the second. He did so by giving up a couple of fly balls and a ground out. But this is a more serious jam, it appears here, with the bases loaded. And the 2 2 pitch on the ground, left side, off the glove of Wilson. One run will score, maybe two. Here comes Bosch, and he will. He's in standing up, and Brandon Inge has a two out, two run single. Vargas had Inge set up for this changeup, but he left the changeup up and out over the plate, and it allowed Brandon to reach out and hit it right past a diving Jack Wilson. I think Wilson slowed it down, but not enough to prevent Brennan Bosch from scoring behind Cabrera. It's a big two-out knock. RBI's 31 and 32. Tigers up 2-0, and here is Gerald Laird. All of this with two outs, nobody on. Walk, single, single, single. Pretty much all infield singles as well. Bosch has got through the infield, but it was on the ground. And it kind of goes back to what I talk about a lot regarding Cabrera. They walked Cabrera, clearly pitching around him, and then that just kind of opens up the floodgates. I mean, he's a lineup turner over kind of guy. If you walk him, then you got to go to Bosch and you got to go to Gian. And his walk was big in this inning. There's a strike on Laird, one and two. Well, the lone walk so far for Vargas has come around to score. Verlander now has two runs to work with. He's got that nervous right leg going too. And that's all he's going to get in this inning as Laird strikes out. So the Tigers break out on top. This would be the curveball, and he has thrown some dandies, but he's also broke out his slide piece against Gutierrez to get a little check swing back to himself, and he threw Gutierrez four sliders, 89 miles an hour and above. Four of them. In the meantime, the Tigers have gotten him a couple of runs, seven strikeouts through four innings with only one walk for Verlander. Josh Bard, Michael Saunders, Jack Wilson here in the fifth inning. Bard is 0 for 1 with a fly ball. Verlander came into the start with 93 strikeouts, so he has an even 100 now. Jared Weaver leads the American League, 124 for the Angels. The 0 1. The second baseman, Guillen. That's routine, one gone. Bring up Michael Saunders. The 
Two hits given up by Verlander today. Both singles. Lopez has one. Kochman has one. Saunders takes one right down the middle. The 0 1. Something else that has aided uh, Verlander through the first four innings of this game is the fact that he is 13 of 17 in first pitch strikes. And uh, when he gets ahead of you, and he's almost impossible to get to if he makes his pitches. 2 1 on Saunders. His strikeout high this year is 11. That was three starts ago against Washington. He has seven already tonight. The 2 1. Swing and a miss. 2 2 on Saunders. A native of Victoria, British Columbia. Saunders now is sold for four in this series. 2 2 pitch is rolled foul. Saunders was called up last year, but he admitted when he was first called up, he was just trying to get his feet wet. And get used to the big league scene. This year, it's a little bit different for him. Feels he has much more confidence. And he fouls off enough. In fact, Russell Brandon was saying that last year when he came up, he was just trying to keep his head above water. This year, he's actually asking about pitchers and what they throw and uh, keeping notes. And Trying to get more in tune with the guy that he's facing on a certain night. Brandon not playing here this evening. 2 2 was swung out and missed, and Verlander gave him another strikeout as eight. Hey fans, celebrate the 4th of July tomorrow at America Park when the Tigers host the Seattle Mariners at 105. All kids 14 and under receive a Johnny Damon poster. For tickets, call 866 66 Tiger or log on to. Tigers.com. Nifty item to have. Johnny not playing tonight. Evening off here. Tigers lead at 2 0. She play in the fifth. And a bouncing ball to short. Easy play for Danny Worth. And it's an easy inning for Justin Verlander. A 1 2 3 frame. Tigers baseball tonight presented by Mel Tiger. In this one, Danny Worth will lead it off against Jason Vargas. First pitch is rolled towards second base. Figgins will throw out Worth one away. Going on around the big leagues. Kirk Gibson won his managerial debut last night, beat the Dodgers 12 5. 
Looks like Manny's back on the DL and the Rays. We told you this at choice of Grand Slam winning his or winning it for the Rays and Twins losing tonight, which means the Tigers can pull into a first place tie with a victory here. It's a ball to Austin Jackson with one out. Jackson is 0 for 2. Strike out and a ground out. Two and the count. AJ Hinch was not only let go in Arizona, but Josh Burns, their general manager, was as well. And he's got what, like five years left on his deal? Yep. That's off the glove. It's gonna be tough to get Jackson. No chance. Infield single. I think what happened in Arizona is that the fact that Josh Burns, their general manager, he uh he went to bat for A.J. Hinch. Uh, he was A.J. Hinch's guy. He hired him. And I think when it was all said and done, he didn't want to fire him. So I guess management felt like both had to go. But uh, that's a lot of length on contract to eat. A.J. Hinch had two more years on his contract. Wow. Apparently things had gone real sour out in Arizona. It's Rayburn who drives one foul down the left field line. But a great opportunity for Kirk Gibson. He's got a half a year to put his stamp on that club. And this much we do know. The Diamondbacks will play hard. They will play hard. Gibby would not accept anything less, I don't think. Here's the 0-1. Tigers in this one got two on the single by Inge with the bases loaded back in the fourth. They now had five hits in this game. Vargas this year. He has one pickoff. Jackson with 13 steals in 16 tries. And that is driven foul. One and two on right. Braver getting a chance to start at left tonight. Johnny Damon getting the night off. I think uh, the skipper said before the game today as well that Damon probably would not play tomorrow either against Cliff Lee, another lefty. Two and two. I never really noticed Rayburn choking up with two strikes, but uh, apparently he is. You'll see some guys around the league that do choke up with two strikes. Allows you to handle the bat a little bit better. The left center field base hit. Maybe more. Morse has trouble with it, or Saunders rather has trouble with it in left, and another run will score in easily. Is Jackson and Rayburn gets the third. Michael Saunders unable to come up with that ball, and that cost him a run. I don't know how they're going to rule that, whether it's going to be a double and an air or whether it's going to be a triple, but he chokes up, which allows you to have a nice, short, quick, easy swing, and he whistles the ball in the left center field. Saunders gets over there and appears to kick it with his left leg, and that trickles into the warning track, and Jackson able to score, and Rayburn able to get to third. Three nothing ball game. Ordonez fouls it away, and the Mariners now pull the infield in. Well, Wakamatsu cannot afford to allow his team to give away any more runs in this game, especially the way the Verlander is pitching. Three runs might already be enough for Verlander. So that's outside. One ball and one strike. Double E seven. No RBI in the play. That's the correct call. The correct ruling, I should say. One and 
two on Maglio. Inside, two balls, two strikes. That was pitch number 91 for Jason Vargas in the fifth inning. Driven left center field. That ball is going to get down. This is score another run. Maglio takes the turn. He's coming to second base. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Double and an RBI for Maglio Ordonez. Tigers are beating up on a pretty good pitcher here. Backdoor breaking ball that Maglio is able to hit it to a shallow center field. And by the time Gutierrez gets it up, Maglio is sliding in with a hustle double. Ordonia is safe at second base, safe and secure in New York life. He's going to bring up Cabrera, but not before Rick Adair comes out to the mound to have a chat with Vargas. Infield hit by Jackson and a couple of doubles for the Tigers, and this has been a good pitching team here in Seattle. Well, they've been the best pitching team in the major leagues since the beginning of June. And realistically, they should have been able to run off one of those kind of stretches like the Chicago White Sox did when they won 15 to 16. But you see, they're only averaging three runs a game down here at the bottom, which is not a whole lot. 25th in that span. So that's pretty much been the reason why they haven't been able to uh, get into that uh, lead of the Texas Rangers in their division. Meanwhile, Cabrera is going to reach for the third straight time. They will walk him intentionally. Here comes ball three outside. The Tigers in this series are seven for 12 at men in scoring position. So they've gotten it done as Brian Sweeney starts to warm up. Also, walking Cabrera to get to uh, Britton Bosch, who we've already documented to you that have been watching the show from the beginning. Brennan hitting 440 against left handed pitching this year. Bosch had a single score to run back in the fourth against Vargas. We'll see what he can do here with a couple of runners aboard and only one out. Well, he will be first pitch swinging if he gets something to his liking. And it really doesn't have to be right down the heart of the plate. You know, you were talking about Saunders, their left uh, fielder, the last time he was up. And the conversation Russell Brannion uh, was talking about how second time the kid came back up he wanted to know this he wanted to know that he wanted to know this this guy in the batter's box he don't want to know any of that I doesn't care he don't want to know any of that <laughs> it's all about me and it's all about getting the ball see ball hit ball it works for him you can't argue with those numbers 341 12 homers 46 driven in and he swings on the first and rips it down the right field line. Foul. He's impressive. Just wide of the foul pole, a laser hit into the seats. Yeesh. He's got some real nice bat speed. I told you I was in the Americas clubhouse before the game, and all they wanted to know is how in the world was this guy rated the 28th best prospect or 25th best prospect in your organization? That's all they wanted to know. Well, really, when you look at his minor league numbers, he really did not bust out until last year at Double A. But 28 home runs in Double A, and he also led the Eastern League in extra base hits. Double A is a good lead. It's really the separator league. You had good numbers in double A. You're about a week away from the big leagues. He went from seven home runs in Lakeland in 08 to 28 home runs in Erie in 09. And a big bang of a debut in the big leagues here in 2010. Popped him up foul back out of play. He just gets good swings. I don't know about you, buddy, but every time I see the initials of Ernie Harwell on these Tigers uniforms, it just kind of brings a smile to your face to know what he stood for. 
will not be forgotten. That is for certain. The 2 2 is lined to left field, a base hit. Maglio coming to third. He'll stop there, and Brennan Bosch has another hit. They are loaded up now. Looked like a breaking ball that was off the plate outside, but look at the bat range that Brennan Bosch has. I mean, able to reach out and hit that ball the opposite way is amazing. That's it for Mr. Vargas. John Wakamatsu makes his way out to the mound. Vargas will be chased here in the fifth inning after crossing the 100 pitch total. He's at 101, and he'll depart. Wallside Windows pitching change. We'll be back. Swing of Brennan Bosch against Vargas, the left hander. You can see the slot he throws from is a tough one. And he throws a breaking ball, but, Bren uh, but Brennan stays right with it and able to hit the ball the opposite way to load the bases. Well, the shortest outing of the season for Vargas, he is chased by that base hit from Bosch. And so Brian Sweeney will take over. Fister, who we saw last night in Vargas tonight, both had real good starts against the Tigers out west, but not here at Comerica Park, where the Tigers have won 11 of their last 12 games. Numbers on Vargas. He is still responsible for the bases loaded, one out. And Guillen hits it toward left with foul. Carlos, an infield hit into advance. He has three grand slams in his back pocket. But one other thing on uh, on Bosch, he's played in 58 big league games now. 25 of those have resulted in multiple hit games. That's an astounding number. 25 of the first 58. Little looper in the right field. That's going to be a base hit right in front of Ichiro. Maglio comes around to score. Everybody moves up 90 feet. The Tigers lead 5 0. That wasn't a bad pitch by Sweeney. Uh, it crowded Carlos Guillen, but watch Guillen pull his hands in here. He pulls his hands in nicely and somehow gets barrel on the ball and able to hit the ball right over Figgins' head, the second baseman. So the carousel continues to turn. 22nd RBI of the year for Guillen. Everybody moves up 90 feet. That'll bring up Inge. Eighth man to bat in this inning. Nine Tigers hits now, just two for Seattle tonight. Two runs in the fourth and now three here in the fifth. Sweeney last appeared in the big leagues with San Diego back in 2006. He then went on to pitch 
in Japan for three years. He's originally signed by Seattle. Now he's back with the M's. Old foul. That one's off his foot. This Mariners bullpen is not nearly as good this year as it was last year. Last year they had some really nice power arms coming out of that bullpen. Some guys are injured. Some guys have gone on to other spots. But you know, their bullpen not nearly the same as it was a year ago. It seemed like last year every guy that came out of Don Wakamatsu's bullpen was throwing 95 miles an hour and above. Inch fouls it away. One and two. The count stays. Conversely, the Tigers have had a really good bullpen this year, although it's a bit of a state of flux right now. Ryan Perry is back with the team. I think Daniel Slareth and uh, Ryan Perry could sort that bullpen out if both guys throw strikes. They both have great stuff. As a matter of fact, they both played together collegiately. Can you imagine that? On the same college team. One, two. He held up. There's Ryan Perry. Both number one picks. Perry, of course, our very own, and Slareth. Arizona Diamondbacks made him their first round selection a couple of years ago. Looking forward to seeing Schlereth get in his first game. He's got great stuff. Little chopper hit slowly toward third. Lopez, tough hop. He'll throw out in. Score Cabrera on the play. And make it six nothing and give Inge his third RBI of the night. So Cabrera has been walked twice in this game, once intentionally, and he's come around both times. That run also charged to Vargas. The runs that uh, Sweeney inherited uh, this inning, which were all Vargas's. Are the first that he has inherited this year. Over two for Gerald, a fly ball and a strikeout. Chased it high, 0 2. At 89 mile power, and a piece of cheese looked pretty good to Laird. But you can't catch up to it at that area. Three RBI night for Brandon. Ordonez has an RBI. Guillen has an RBI. And the Tigers have built a 6 0 lead for Verlander, who's given up just two hits in this game and no runs. Low and away, two and two. Second baseman sharply, but Figgins is there, and that will retire the side. Big inning. Tigers send nine men to the plate. They score four times, and they have opened up the lead now.
gives you an indication of the stuff that Verlander has today. And Ichiro leading it off here in the sixth inning. Figgins and Bradley to follow. Six nothing in favor of Detroit. Offense sparking with two in the fourth, four in the fifth. Ichiro hammers one foul back out of play. One one. The only player in the major leagues with a higher career active batting average that's active with a higher batting average than Ichiro. I think you've heard of Albert, the machine, Pujols, out in St. Louis. The 1 1. Flared toward left field, back out of play. And that's fascinating because Pujols does not get any infield singles at all. This guy gets boatloads of infield singles. Pujols slugs his way on. Ichiro in this one, a strikeout in the first, strikeout in the third. That makes him one for six in the series. And the one two. He just not has, has not looked comfortable tonight in any of his advance. They held him in check last night too. Until his last at bat. His 107 hits is second only to Robinson Cano in the American League. Lines one toward left field. Rayburn is right there, one gone. Time for another game break as we go back to the studio, and here's Trevor Thompson. Thank you very much, Trev. As Figgins stands in. Strasburg, I think, went five today for Washington, who finds themselves on national television every time he pitches. Now. Yeah, last place club. <laughs> Ground ball, fair ball inside the bag at third base. Figgins will take the turn, but Rayburn got to it quickly. One out single. Only the third hit for Seattle tonight. They hadn't played correctly. That much is for certain. Uh, Inge gave him a little bit more on that line, though. Most left-handers don't hit the ball directly down the line, but Rayburn able to get off over toward that line and keep uh, Figgins at first base, at least momentarily. Now Milton Bradley. Really hasn't been too many bumps in the road tonight for Verlander. They got a couple of runners on in the fourth, but couldn't score. Bradley has a walk and a strikeout. I don't think Verlander will pay all that much attention to Figgins. They're down by six. And I guess if he runs, he just runs. That was close. We told you earlier that uh, Verlander has very quick feet. It's one of your better pickoff moves for a pitcher that's right handed in all of baseball. Especially his size. But when he does decide to go home, you can steal a base. Lee Tinsley, third base coach. Mike Brumley, first base coach. A 1 1 to Bradley. Rolled foul. Looks like Figgins wants to run. Tom Cass is telling us that Verlander has been all the way up to 98. More than likely, he has touched that a couple of different times. And he has gone as low as 78. That would be with the curveball or the changeup. He throws his slider a little bit harder than 78 miles an hour. Swing and a miss. Oh, he's nasty today. Bradley is disposed of, and Verlander now has nine strikeouts. I mean, just straight nasty today is JV. Again, his season high is 11. The only time he has reached double digits this year, and that was three starts ago against Washington. 95 or higher. 40 total pitches have gone 95 miles an hour or higher of the 88 that he's thrown.
Tigers are going to have this guy for at least the next five years. Verlander signed a real nice long term deal before the season started. I've been awfully fortunate in uh, my broadcasting career. When I started in Arizona, I got a chance to watch Schilling and Randy Johnson every fifth day. Now I get a chance to watch this cat every fifth day. Leave it a miss. He'll be a Tiger through 2014. I watched Randy Johnson win four straight Cy Youngs in the National League. Four straight. And Schilling could have won a couple of those Cy Youngs had it not been for Johnson. That's how good he was pitching. Johnson's probably the most dominant guy I've ever seen pitch. Me too. That four year stretch was incredible. That last swing and miss uh, that Lopez took was another slider. Verlander very comfortable with that slider here today against these right handers. Lopez got tired of waiting, so he stepped out. He has a single and two at bats. Driven foul down the left field line. 0 and 2 on Jose Lopez. Last year was their club leader in RBIs with 96. He also belted out 42 doubles, which led the team. Didn't really walk a whole lot. In fact, he came in only 13 walks all season long with better than 300 at bats. Rolls this one toward third for Brandon in. And that will end the inning. No runs to hit. One man left. Bottom of the sixth coming up. Had a big night with a total of three RBIs. And here is Danny Worth to lead it off. Worth and then Jackson and then Rayburn. Tigers have nine hits. Danny 0 for 2, line out, ground out. The 0 1. Breaking ball is tipped into the glove 0 and 2. Sweeney took over for the starter. That was Vargas who got bumped out in the fifth inning. Yeah. 
Ryan first got to the big leagues with Seattle back in 2003. Then he went to San Diego, then Japan. And the Mariners decided to bring him back into the organization. And that's it for Worth. He struck him out looking, one gone. Quite a few guys in this ballpark uh, played in Japan. I played in Japan. You're talking about Sweeney playing over there, and the Mariners have a couple of coaches on their staff that also played in Japan. Ty Van Berkeley was a teammate of mine in Hiroshima when we played for the Carp, and Alonzo Powell had a really nice career in Japan. He's their hitting coach. As a matter of fact, Alonzo Powell, when Ichiro was winning batting titles in the Pacific League, Alonzo Powell was winning batting titles in the Central League over in Japan. Austin Jackson, the batter. Sweeney played for the Nippon Ham Fighters. One of the all time great nicknames. Of course, Carp is not bad either. And his hit toward right field, slicing away from Ichiro, and back out of play. Chunichi Dragons. Who'd you play for? Hiroshima Park. Park. So the Tokyo Giants, it's Tokyo Giants, right? Tokyo Giants. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of bomb. They are the Yankees. Yeah. They need to spice it up. One and two. A little bit low, two balls, two strikes. By the way, I ran into a guy before the game today who uh, was seeking your autograph and wanted to know my opinion on whether or not you would sign a still photo of you chasing that pitcher in his hand. <laughs> I said, sure he would. <laughs> Line straight to third, two gone. And you're right, I would have signed I know you would. You wouldn't turn it down. Hey, as soon as the game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live here for manager Jim Leland and the players. Plus, we'll have a breakdown of the game and show you all the highlights. Tigers Live from the Call Sam Studios immediately after the game here on Fox Sports Detroit. We'll bring up Ryan Rayburn. Ball outside to Rayburn. How many times would you say you've seen that video? Oh, lots, lot, yeah, lot. And we've seen on the road a lot these days. Seems like uh, every time uh, we go on the road, someone wants to dig it out. <laughs> and they usually do. And bring it up. And that's going to drop right in front of Gutierrez. Two out single. It's good to see Rayburn's bat perk up. Rayburn's starting to swing the bat a lot better the last few weeks. So Ryan has two more hits tonight. And he continues to swing that hot bat. Here comes Ordonez. Leland's always talking about how it will take an entire roster of 25 guys to win a championship. You can't have the same three or four guys do it every night, as good as Ordonez and Cabrera and Bosch have been. That's drilled again to the gap in left center, but Saunders will get over there to cut this one off. That's all for the Tigers in the sixth. We go to the seventh.
Seattle by a score of six to nothing. Thought of a huge crowd again here tonight, better than 32,000 fans. And they saw the Tigers put up two in the fourth and four in the fifth. Meanwhile, Verlander has done the rest. Franklin Gutierrez leads it off. Will be followed by Kochman and then Bard. First pitch sails inside, one and zero oh on Franklin Gutierrez. Pop up and a ground out. Don Kelly, meanwhile, takes over and left for Ryan Rayburn. Gutierrez homer to the ball game last night accounting for their only run tonight Seattle so far has been shut out by Verlander. The one one. Ooh, look at that breaking ball but it missed. Two and one. Justin tonight has dipped down into his bag of tricks and used everything he has had this evening. And he has given up just three hits. Soft line drive to second, the end. Reaching to make the catch. One out. Now Casey Kochman. Kochman is one for two. We're talking about his struggles offensively, but with the glove, he has a consecutive errorless game streak of 242 going, which is a major league record. In fact, he established the record on Father's Day, which meant a lot to him because his dad, Tom Kochman, a minor league manager and a scout for the Angels, used to work with him and his defense tirelessly every day. In case he grew up around the game. Back to said his dad would stand at third and hit him line drives in the dirt to simulate balls that he had to pick out of the dirt. He would then do it at short, then do it at second. And that helped him become a really good first baseman. This Mariners team, they've committed quite a few errors for this year, and they would have a whole lot more if it wasn't for Kotsman in the way that he can pick balls out of the dirt. He has saved the left side of their infield a few times. And he is waiting on a 1 2 offering. Driven pretty hard. Left center field. Jackson can't get it. It'll roll by him to the wall, and Kochman rounding the bag at second, but he'll wisely hold up. That's his second hit tonight. Looked like Jackson was shading Kochman into that left center field gap. You can see where he starts. But that ball just kept slicing away from Austin. And he just wasn't able to corral it. Not much that goes up in center that he can't get. Just missed that ball. So that's going to bring up Bard. As the Mariners trying to get on the board here, just their fourth hit of the game. A little defensive swing, and that's going to drop fair into left field, but Kochman had to hold up, so he'll move to third. Josh Bard has a looping single. Five hits for Seattle. We got Michael Saunders. So what you gonna do tomorrow? What you gonna cook on the grill tomorrow? And what's your specialty when you do get on that grill? My specialty is having someone else cook for Come me. Come on, you gotta break, you gotta do it on That's the grill. That's my specialty. You know, ribs are good on the grill. Ribs. I love shrimp on the grill. Steaks, of course. How about you? I like all of that. But uh, I've been invited out to. Uh, Tomorrow over at Buddy's house, so I'm gonna go eat his food. Nice. Drink his beverages. Well, 
Fourth of July is always a fun time. Hopefully it'll be a Tigers win tomorrow. We can go home and celebrate. Have a nice evening. Tough opponent down the hill tomorrow though for the Tigers and Cliff Lee. The 0 1. Now are you a charcoal guy or are you a gas guy? No, I gotta be charcoal. Yeah, it tastes better. Yeah, it tastes better. But I won't lie, our grill at home is a gas grill. <laughs> It's much simpler to hit a couple it's of buttons. It's a lot quicker. It's a lot quicker. But the charcoal just makes it different. Totally different. The 1 1. Is a strike call, 1 and 2. How about you got any special barbecue sauces that you've got? My dad. My dad had his own little recipe, you know, and, and before he passed away, he finally kind of gave it to me, you know, and I really? kind of watched how he made the barbecue sauce. And I kind of make my own barbecue sauce. I buy some from the store, then I put it in there. And I kind of doctored it up a little bit with a little little lemon and a little mm. brown sugar and a little vinegar. Give it a real nice flavor. Slow roller. Guillen to play. No play. And a run will score to make it 6-1. to one. For the longest time, um, my dad would not give that uh, recipe to anybody. Really? I finally gave it to him. Now, can you make it as well as he used? Well, probably not as well, but it's pretty good. So the Tigers now get on the phone, get the bullpen working here because Verlander is over 100 pitches, 104 to be exact. Here comes Rick Knapp. And Seattle's on the board to make it 6 to 1. Still only one out. Hey, fans, visit the official online shop of the Detroit Tigers at tigers.com. Browse the largest selection of all official gear, including. The latest apparel, and they get your gear from the official source at the Tigers.com shop. Accept, accept no substitutes. So a little bit of trouble now for Verlander for the first time in this game. The Mariners have runners at first and second, and a run in. Russell Brannion is checking in now. Wilson do up, will not bat. Brannion will in his spot. Well, if you're down Wakamatsu, you got to take one swing with your big boy to see if. He can hit you a three run home run. That's exactly what they're looking for here. Brandon doesn't hit many singles. And he's got a lot of power. I want to know on Brandon. Bullpen action for the Tigers. Schlereth is the lefty, Perry is the righty. I was wondering uh, why Brandon didn't start in this game, and uh, Casey Kochman got to start. His numbers aren't very good against Verlander. One for six with five strikeouts against Verlander Whoa. is Brandon. Not good at all. Got a shot here, though. Swing and a miss. That's the area right there. If you throw about 92 93 to left handers and you can get the ball inside around the belt buckle most guys can't get to this pitch now if it's down it's a different story but that ball where they got to climb the ladder a little bit especially a hard free swinger big swinger like Brandon tough to get to got him strike three and had another strikeout to that total against Verlander and in fact Verlander's total tonight overall is 10. Kerwin Danley called that high strike. Fox Tracks says it's good. And it was at 98 miles an hour. This guy is like a, uh, a freak of nature. 13th career, 10 or more strikeout game. 108 pitches in. Still throwing those little bitty ones up there. Little aspirins. Here's where each row gets tough. And there's runners on base. Ichiro tonight is 0 for 3, relatively quiet in the series. 1 for 7 for their talented leadoff man. Two and 0. I thought that Ichiro was the most exciting leadoff hitter in the game until we went to New York. And had a chance to watch Jose Reyes up close and personal for those two games where he got loose against us. 
The two off. Little chopper back up the middle. Worth going over. Going to be a tough play. Safe at first base. Worth did the best he could, and that's going to load him up. He throws still good. He is still one of the more electrifying players in the game, and he gets tons of hits like these. But boy, I was impressed with Reyes those couple of games in New York. Well, let me ask you this. Would you take Reyes over Ichiro? Right now? Yeah. Yes. Really? Right now, yes. He's a lot younger. A lot younger. And that would be the only reason why I would take him over Ichiro, is the youth. Now, if they were both the same age, then I would probably go for Ichiro. 24 infield hits for Ichiro. They're loaded now for Sean Figgins. Ball high. Figgins one for three. Fouled off the mask of Laird. One ball in, one strike. The uh, Mariners here can make it really interesting with a base hit. It's a five run game right now. Ouch. That sounded like it had extra thud on the end of it. Ground ball to second. Should get him out of the inning. And it will. So Verlander gives up only one run in the inning. They'll go to the stretch. Cabrera, Bosch, Diaz coming up. Innings. His last one against Seattle was back in July of 08. So he will try and get another victory here tonight, exactly two years later. There's Cabrera leading it off. Bosch and then Guillen here in the seventh. Six runs, ten hits, Detroit. One run, seven hits, Seattle. Cabrera had a double back in the second. Drives the first pitch in the air to center. Gutierrez right there. One pitch, one out. Gonna bring up Brendan Bosch. Two more hits tonight for Bosch. And that gives him five already in the series. And we're not even two full games in. Both of Bosch's hits are singles. He has also scored a run. Speed on the outside corner, 0 and 1. Bosch just finishing up a 337 month of June. Bosch.
Rush really hasn't showed the opposition a chink in his armor yet. Usually after about the first month in the big leagues, most opposing pitching coaches, managers, they can kind of figure you out a little bit if you're a young player. But he really hasn't tipped his hand as to what he really can't do while standing in that batter's box yet. They tried fastballs. They tried breaking balls. They tried it all. Left handers. He's been up for every single challenge. 12 home runs, 46 RBIs. Six game hitting streak right now. And Bosch also had an eight gamer back in May. Oh and two on Bosch. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Bosch is out of there. Sweeney has his second strikeout. Two gone here in the seventh. He's gonna bring up Guillen. Series finale tomorrow on the 4th of July here at the ballpark. Bonderman and Lee will get together in that game. It'll be a dandy. And you don't want to miss it one way or another. Either get out here or watch it on television. Cliff Lee, one of the better left handed pitchers in all of baseball. And the Orioles are going to be coming in, and boys, Baltimore having a season to forget. It's a tough situation there. Tough, tough situation. 24 and 55. They've been bad for a long time, too. Yeah, they really have. That's into left field. Should be a 1 2 3 inning. Saunders is there, and it is. Tigers go in order. We go to the eighth. Is, so it's an opportunity for uh, our men and women and uh, the uniform personnel around the world to kind of enjoy themselves courtesy of Fox Sports and uh, it's kind of a neat thing U.S. Department of uh, Defense also in on that. Absolutely. As we celebrate the 4th of July weekend Ryan Perry will check in out of the Detroit bullpen. First time we've seen Ryan in a few peak a few weeks excuse me. Uh, he was put on the disabled list with a uh, tired shoulder I guess. Uh, you could say. And uh, with Zamaya being out for the season, it's going to be very important for Perry to pitch well out of that Tigers bullpen. There's no doubt about that. He's got the stuff to do so. And he has done it at this level. 
They've been giving uh, Milton Bradley uh, a steady diet of fastballs here today, albeit they are 96 mile per hour fastballs. The 0 2. Headed back to the seats. Kelly will cruise over and back out of play. And the numbers on Perry and Toledo. That last pitch was too good. 0 and 2, 96 right down the middle. And you don't want to get hurt in an 0 2 count if you're Perry. Four walks and three and two thirds. He had four strikeouts as well. We'll see what he comes back with here on his next 0 2 pitch. Lopez and then Gutierrez to follow. We're in the eighth. Tigers lead it six to one. That's better. And now you can make it happen. Nothing but heat. Swing and a miss. And the outside black, and down goes Bradley, one away. All fastballs to Milton Bradley. It's third time Milton has struck out here today. And all three on fastballs that are 95 miles an hour and above. That's Lopez. It's 11 strikeouts for Tigers pitching here tonight. Ten of those by Verlander. Oh, and one on Lopez. Breaking ball fouled off 0 and 2. Lopez tonight is one for three. Seattle did not score until getting a run in the seventh. Tigers built a 6 0 lead, now 6 1. Perry was sidelined since the 7th of June. Tendonitis in his bicep, right shoulder. The 1 2. Franklin Gutierrez waiting on deck. Round ball, third base side. Brandon Inge has it. Lopez is out. I want to take you back to the uh, fourth inning, and it was an at bat uh, with Gutierrez going up against Verlander. And for me, these are the best sliders that I've seen Verlander with this year. I mean, look at the tilt and the depth on these pitches that he's throwing to Gutierrez. And they were all in the 89 to 91 mile an hour area. Just a real nice slide piece Verlander was featuring today to go along with the overpowering fastball, the curve. And he didn't throw many changeups today. Not many at all. And he didn't need it. In fact, it was five years ago tomorrow on the 4th of July in 2005 that Verlander made his big league debut in Cleveland. 10 strikeout evening tonight. Here's the 1 0. And I remember it like it was yesterday, Verlander, after that start. The one thing that he took from him is he realized that he needed more pitches to get through big league lineups. The fastball was good, but those secondary pitches had to improve to get better. Boy, have they. 2 0 -oh is low, 3 0 -oh on Gutierrez. One above average pitch allows you to pitch up here. And two really allows you to compete. Three allows you to win and dominate. Verlander's got four above average pitches, which is why he can dominate on occasion. 
So walk to Gutierrez with two outs. You bring up Kochman. Jim Leland knows with a Minnesota loss, they have a chance to get back into first place, a tie with the Twins with a win here tonight. Tampa beats Minnesota earlier today. Tigers just continue to get it done at home. If they win here tonight, they will be 27 and 11 at Comerica Park this year. And now here comes Rick Knapp. Ryan Perry has lost his way after recording two quick outs. Schlereth is still throwing the left hander. Gonzalez has joined him. And with Daniel Schlereth warming up, you know that Mark Schlereth right now is getting a little bit antsy. His dad is here tonight. I think he said it best uh, in the pregame show, and you know this. Whenever you played any sports growing up, I mean, it was okay whether you failed, succeeded. I mean, you could deal with that, but it is so hard to watch your own kids play sometimes, and when they're not doing well, you just feel helpless. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, that is for certain. You just feel helpless. I mean, you want them to do so well all the time. It is hard to watch your kids play. We'll see if Schlereth gets into this game. There's Daniel heating it up. The one one to Kochman is outside two balls in one strike. Casey in the ball game has been one of their better hitters to double a single and a run score. Here's the two one. Rolled foul first base side two two. Well, if the Tigers go on to win this game and Verlander gets his 10th win, he will have had 10 wins before the All Star break four times in his five years in the big leagues. Back to back outstanding starts and by Verlander and also Matt Scherzer. They both gave up one run. Bouncing ball right back in the mound. Perry will do the job. Hatchman is out of there. Two out walk is stranded. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. 6 1 Detroit. He threw 40 pitches uh, his last outing a couple of uh, innings against Milwaukee for Paulie. 
Hey, Tigers fans, this season is easier than ever to find the seats you want or to sell the tickets to the games that you just can't make on StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Detroit Tigers. Go to StubHub.com and choose your seats today. So here come the Tigers now as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Brandon Inge leads it off against Pauly, the big right-hander. It'll be Inge, Laird, and Worth. Three RBIs tonight for Brandon. Two of them came on a single with the bases loaded in the fourth. And that got the Tigers on the board first. That was a big knock, too. That was with two outs. There's another hit. Maybe extra bases. It's going to go all the way to the warning track in the wall. Hinge will go to second and pull in with a double. It's amazing what a couple of days of extra batting practice at about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon can do for you. And that's the case with uh, Brandon Inns the last couple of days. He's driven in three today, and that's his third hit today. He also had a couple of knocks in last night's game. Tigers have their 11th hit. Nineteen doubles now for Brandon. Which leaves him eight shy of 200 for his career. Laird takes ball one. Gerald 0 for three. One ball, one strike. Holly is out of Longmont, Colorado. Almost December sent as a minor league free agent. Last appeared with Boston in the big leagues in 08. And then he's fouled off one and two. Jose Valverde warming up in the Detroit bullpen. Looks like he'll get some work here tonight, regardless of the score. Lifted in the air, shallow right center field, and caught on a slide by Ichiro. Don't know if he really needed to leave his feet, but. Uh, it looked good, Ichiro. Yeah, probably not. No, I don't think so. <laughs> He's got style. He's got flair. He got nine gold clubs, yep. too. <laughs> so all that style and flair has paid off. No question. Here's Danny Worth. He's got swagger about it. There's no doubt about that. Worth his over three. As a matter of fact, he and Tory Hunter have had a stranglehold on the gold gloves for the last eight, nine years in the American League. It's tough to win one when those guys are playing. I believe Crawford got the other one. Those three guys are probably in the leader. In the clubhouse for the gold gloves again. The one thing we notice about Ichiro is he's always stretching. He has a lot of different types of stretches that he does. He'll do it before he comes to the plate. He'll do it in the outfield just about every inning. Very, very limber. He's in great shape. Got a young body. There he goes again. Maybe everybody ought to be stretching like that. <laughs> Thank you. This guy's getting 200 knocks a year. Will that make us gold lovers? Strike called, and Danny Worth is punched out of there in a breaking ball. Well, here is the voting for the McDonald's player of the game. It's brought to you by the McDonald's Deluxe Angus third pounder. Justin Verlander, Brandon Inge, and Brennan Bosch are your top three vote getters so far. Final results. Coming up on Tigers Live. Swing and a miss by Austin Jackson.
Infield single for Jackson in the fifth, one for four. Seven game hit streak now for Austin. Roll this one to the shortstop. Josh Wilson on the jump. And that's all for the Tigers. They get a leadoff double. Failed to score him though, and we'll go to the ninth. I guess, and the strike guys out. Yeah, a little different flavor here tonight. So we're not going to show you any defensive plays because they really didn't have to make any tonight. Behind Verlander, 10 strikeouts, and he got them done with fastballs early. Then he went to his secondary pitches in the middle of the game. And then when he went back out in the sixth and seventh, uh, he was throwing that 96, 97, 98 mile power fastball with regularity. Boy, is he good. Verlander now three outs away from getting a victory. It'll be Jose Valverde trying to put this one in the win column for him. He's pretty good too. Josh Bard leading it off here in the night. First pitch outside. Tigers have 11 hits, seven to four Seattle. 18 of 19 in saves and save opportunities. The earned run average is tremendous. And the opponent's batting average is 102 against Papa Grande. I think the Tigers realized what they were getting when they got this guy. Do you think they thought the numbers would be this good? No. And I don't think any other team in baseball did either. He wouldn't have been on the free agent market as long as he was. He would have been the first guy pulled off. If general managers would have thought he would put up these kind of numbers. Stifling numbers for Valverde. One and two. Dave certainly has to be happy with this acquisition. Well, the market was kind of soft this year for closers, and there was quite a few closers out there. And Valverde just happened to be there in January when, you know, the Tigers had a little bit more extra money to spend, and they were able to get him. Two and two. I tell you this much, it's a nice luxury to have, to have a guy that can go out there, and no matter what the situation, whether it be one of these types of situations where... It's a no save or whether it be a one run lead. He seems to be as efficient in all situations. And I haven't seen anybody hit that split finger fastball yet. Well, there's the strikeout one away. And there it was again. That is 12 strikeouts for Tigers pitching tonight. Take a look at this pitch. I have not seen anyone center this pitch this year. Tombolina. 
Here is Michael Saunders with one out. Saunders infield single provided their only run. That was in the seventh inning off Verlander. One ball, one strike on Saunders. Then you start looking for that split fingered fastball, or at least it's in the back of your mind, and then all of a sudden you get 95 96 from uh, Valverde. Good pitch that just missed. Two and one. Make it two and two on Saunders. Well, Saunders had his fastball to hit. It's over now. Here comes that splitter. Two and two to Saunders. Three balls, two strikes. Josh Wilson would be next. Or will be next. That's another thing that Valverde does. In this count, three balls, two strikes. He has enough confidence in that splitter to throw it over the plate. But he missed there. One out base on ball, Saunders aboard. Now well, let's see what else is going on in the Central. We told you that Minnesota lost to Tampa, and Texas is leading at home in the bottom of the sixth against Chicago. What does Texas have enough? I really don't know. Do they have enough? They are three and a half games in front of the Angels when play began today. They got enough offense. Pitching, I'm not so sure. That Angels team, no matter what they go through. Mike Sosa still has those guys in the hunt every single year. Every year. They find a way to get it done, that's for sure. They lost Lackey and Figgins in the offseason. They didn't re sign Vlad Guerrero. They lost their first baseman, Kendry Morales, to a broken leg, and yet they just keep on rolling. They had Ivar out for a while as well with an injury. Another thing to consider about Texas is, is their closer is a rookie, albeit a very impressive one in Neftali Feliz, but he is still a rookie. He didn't phase the Tigers. He did not phase the Tigers when we were there. 1 1 with the runner going and no throw. Two balls, one strike on Josh Wilson. I don't remember exactly what his numbers were, but uh, the Tigers stressed him out for a couple of days in that series in Texas. This is Wilson's first at bat. And a bouncing ball. Danny Wirt will throw him out. Two gone, moving runner to third, and it's going to be up to the leadoff man, Ichiro. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and thirty in attendance tonight, coming to their feet. In anticipation of that final out. Tigers try to get their 11th win, make it their 12th win, their last 13 at home. Ichiro had an infield hit of the seventh. His only hit tonight. Fouled off. Don't forget tomorrow it's day baseball here on the 4th of July. We hope you'll join us. Tigers and Mariners. Tigers live at 12:30 tomorrow.
Bonnerman will throw for the Tigers against Cliff Lee. Tigers live pregame tomorrow. They're making, they're making John Keating work on the holidays. Oh, absolutely! It's a special holiday edition. One ball, one strike. Two and one. Valverde started the inning by striking out Bard. He gave up a walk to Saunders. Wilson grounded out. Ichiro trying to keep it going. Ichiro. Thickens would be next. In ball four, that is the second walk in the inning for Valverde. So it's still going here for Seattle. They are still alive. Valverde had 12 walks to go with his 32 strikeouts coming in in 34 innings. He has walked a pair here tonight. Figgins one for four. Line drive caught by Brandon Ange and the Tigers win it. He hit it right at it. Tigers make it two straight over Seattle and they jump into a first place tie with Minnesota in the central. So it's turned out to be a really good Fourth of July weekend so far. The Tigers have won the first two in this series against the M's. A whole lot more coming up when we come back. Our final score tonight: six-one Tigers. Stay with us. We'll be back.